This is my inspiration. This is a Klein tool bag. I love these Klein tool bags. I've been using them for years. I've always been inspired to maybe make one. And in this video, I'm gonna make one. I could not find the gate mouth hardware available online. So I decided to buy two Klein bags, one for the before picture and use one as my sample and also a place to get all the hardware from. This is the smaller one. This is a larger one. You can see by the model numbers, by the way. This is a 14 inch, this is a 12 inch. And I dismantled this in the video, you'll see. And I use all the hardware and I use this as my pattern. And here you see my finished bag, which came out pretty good. There's a lot of learning on this. As I say often, you go to school on the first one. And I certainly went to school on how to pop these rivets in how to hammer them in with limited access to put an anvil behind them. And then I accidentally drilled three holes through the face of this, which is my stupidity, but it was too late. If it was a client job, I would have started over, but considering I'm making content and just learning and teaching, it's certainly still a good bag and I will use it and I can't wait to see it get all worn in. Thank you, Weaver. Enjoy this video. And if you needed hardware for something, you could always just go buy something just like it. You get a pattern and you get all the hardware. Okay, here we have a Klein tool bag. This is the 14 inch. I bought two of them just in case I screwed up. And I could not find this hardware online. Ohio Travel Bag has it, but I didn't really understand how to install it. So I said the best way for me to do that would be to get my hands on a Klein bag. I just bought them on Amazon. They came to the house. Sacrificial, sometimes you gotta spend a little bit of money and just go for it. Whatever, a $30, $40 bag, I consider it an education. I had to grind off the rivets. They had these rivets, these splayed rivets. They were obviously put on with a machine or a rivet setter. And I dissect the bag, try not to cut it apart. If you're gonna do this, you wanna surgically take it apart. I'm not trying to cut anything. I'm actually want to use all this hardware over, so I'm trying to take it off delicately. Grinding the back of the, the smashed rivets, trying to pull everything out cleanly. I take the feet off. I don't use the feet again. I don't really like the idea of the feet, especially since we're going to have a leather bottom at this point. It's going to take a nice wear and tear. Now, when I turn this bag inside out, I see here that we have Roman corners. I think that's what it's called, but that makes a lot of sense. I didn't realize how this was sewn together, but now that I see that it's Roman corners, it makes perfect sense to me how this was constructed. I've had experience making these type of bags. You sew them with straight sides, and then you pull out a triangle and sew across perpendicularly, which I'm dissecting there apart. So the pattern that this makes, when it's all cut completely apart, and thank you to Ethan Carter for my exacto knife there, that pattern that it makes, the H shaped pattern, is not the pattern that we need to sh cut into our pieces. You'll see what I mean. That shape is made after it's sewn together and then you modify it by cutting away some of it. It's, it's complicated yet very simple at the same time. So I'm using these parts as my pattern. And I'm gonna use that chipboard also in the bottom of my duplicate piece. We got some beautiful leather from Weaver. They donated a bunch of beautiful leather to the Netflix show. We didn't end up using all of it. And now this is a beautiful piece of red leather. It has the right thickness and the right flexibility for this bag. It seems just right. There's no beating the flexibility and the compactability of that canvas. So I'm going to have to make some sacrifices here and hope this leather compresses when I'm making turns around that frame. I made a few mistakes on this, there's no doubt about it. And uh, I, as I say, over and over again, you go to school on the first one. Right there, you see that square? I'm not cutting that square because we need that to get to the Roman corner. And I hope that's what it's called. If it's not, somebody can correct me in the comments below. And I'm just freehanding it and there's a pretty big seam allowance. That means how much material is left over after the stitch line. So this is about a half inch of the seam allowance. Again, I'm not cutting the H shape. The H shape will get made later. 
I'm using my Starrett steel ruler. You see how I left the razor blade stuck in the cutting mat when I move my ruler? This way you don't get a double cut. Always use a steel ruler, by the way. Never use an aluminum ruler because your razor blade will jump the ruler and cut you. Now I'm just using Type On 2. It's just PVA. It's the same thing as the white glue. It'll do the same job. Now I just want to hold this all together while I sew it. So I noticed in the original Klein bag that this was stitched there to keep the cardboard in place. So you can't see it, but I can certainly feel where the cardboard ends. And this is my Weaver 303 walking foot. This will sew beautifully on most leathers. It does have a limit though, because it's not really a saddle style machine, which you'll see in a minute. So in my estimation, in my, in my guesstimation experience, I know I'm going to laminate this protective piece of leather on the bottom. It has to go up the side, so I need to glue it in place as if it's in the position of going up the sides. If I glue it flat on the table and then I go to fold it, the red will be bunched up inside the bag. So instead I pre-bend it, glue it in place, and so now when I stitch it, it's where it will be when the bottom and the sides are perpendicular to each other at a 90 degree angle. So I'm doing the same thing now to the other side. I'm bending it against that cardboard insert, pushing it down, and I put a little bit of glue on there, put it in position and clamp it. Now that's such a beautiful finish on the red that glue won't really hold for long. It's really just to keep it in place when I stitch it. The other thing too is running it through a sewing machine that does not have a walking foot. You run the risk of that leather getting pushed and sliding across the top of one another. And then by the time you get to the end, the upper piece is pushed and smushed across the bottom piece. And that's the other reason why I like to use glue. Although I am using a walking foot, it is still possible, especially since the red has a very slick surface. It has a, well, actually quite a beautiful finish. It feels nice. And so it occurred to me, to, to inspired by the Klein logo, let me put the Weaver leather logo there. That's Corian plastic. I ran it through the laser cutter three times, my full spectrum laser. Now to avoid any overspill, I cut exactly right away up to the edge of the logo. So now I'm using my turn of the century fly press, puts down several tons of pressure, and I just give it a jam. I'm doing this now because I wouldn't be able to do it while the bag is assembled. So I give it a couple of jams. I don't want to miss an opportunity here and have a really good impression. This leather is a little thin, so it's hard to get a really good impression. In fact, by the time I'm done, the impression kind of faded a little bit. You'll see by the end, I'll show you an example in a really nice piece of hide, veg tan. This is where I realize the cardboard insert in the bottom really prohibits me being able to use this traditional shape sewing machine. So I sew up both sides as much as I can while I'm trying to come up with an answer to my problem. You'll see that, you see how the back is prohibiting me from getting right up to the sewing head. So right there, I need to stitch all the way past where my fingers are, and I can't because I just can't do it. I'm hoping I can, I can, I can't. I got to go to Taylor Studio to use the 205 post machine, and that's where we are now. I ran over to Taylor Studio. She has this saddle machine. This is a Weaver 205. It will sew through an inch of veg tan. It is unbelievably strong. It is an incredible machine. You've seen me use it to, to sew the notebooks and stuff. And I'm also using a, an incredible pair of scissors from Weaver, which are unbelievably sharp. And you'll see how much leather I can just scissor through effortlessly. Now here, this is where I couldn't go with my other machine, but having the post machine, which doesn't have a table around the sewing area, you're able to manipulate and do quite a bit. Now, I, this is where I do the Roman corners that I was talking about. Now you see, I have to sew through all that. I just reduce it a little bit with those scissors, which are incredibly sharp. And now with this walking foot machine, I just go boom, right through everything. I do a little back stitch to close that at the end. And now you'll see the same shot from a different angle from the other side. Now that triangle I cut out makes that H shape that was in those original patterns that you saw me cut apart. Now watch this. So now, we have a bag with a square flat bottom, and I sewed right up to the edge of the cardboard insert. Now with the scissors, I just cut off that triangle, and there we are. And those scissors are just 
probably the sharpest scissors I've ever used. As you can plainly see, sewing through four, in some cases, six layers of leather. And now I touch up and now back to my studio to install the hardware. Now you can see the corners that are removed and now we flip it inside out to see how well everything landed. This is a little stressful because there, there, is, a, there is a pleat that I didn't want, but again, I'm making content here. I'm not really making a customer bag. If this was a customer bag, I would make it three, four times before I decided to actually make one and sell it because you need to get educated. I'm, I'm starting to notice the logo impression is becoming slightly faded. It's still absolutely there, but it's not quite as potent as it was when I first impressed it. But again, this is a thin leather. It's hard to get a deep impression in thin leather. Now, this is where I make my biggest mistake. And I didn't quite understand how the frame went on until I made a major mistake. Now, I glue the frame there. It's really only supposed to be glued along the long edge, right there where my fingers were. And then the big pleats get attached. So right here, I'm making a huge mistake. I'm drilling along the three on each outside, one, two, three, those three holes on the extreme short sides should not have been drilled through the face. That's where I made my biggest mistake. And now here being a little insecure, I'm going to glue everything so that everything stays where it's supposed to. And you'll realize I developed the confidence in the education screwing up this side to then do the other side without glue and then do it properly. So I glue those in. And then it's when I go to put the rivets in that I realized I should not have drilled holes See right here, I'm drilling. So I drilled through and now I'm drilling back through, through the leather that's rolled over the frame. And right here is where I'm realizing, oh, I shouldn't have drilled holes through the front because the pleats get attached from inside. So I, I'm already aware of my mistake and I'm just annoyed. And now I think uh, I cut the camera and maybe I'm not aware of my mistake because it's still glued to the inside front. I forget exactly, but you'll see the camera will, will jump. Now here, uh, I just spent some time off camera correcting my mistake. So now you see those pleats are only supposed to be attached from the inside, not through the face. And I knew that because I dissected the bag, but I just wasn't thinking straight. Now with these copper rivets from Weaver, you, I just, I only happen to have the really long ones. That's just what I had in house, but you buy these in one and half inch and that's to stack up to connect straps to saddles and so on. And that's why they're really long. And you put the rivet up and in, and then you put the backing on and with the tool, you bottom it out and then you cut off whatever you don't need. And then that same tool has a balling head. So one side pushes down the collar and the other side balls the head and that's what I'm doing I'm balling the head and you'll notice uh, so I had to cut them short and ball it again now this is what I was talking about having the anvil inside I just got that piece of brass to be able to back some of the rivets I was having a pretty hard time and there you go so now with the confidence and the mistakes I made on the front one now this is the other side no glue I'm just going to make sure everything is where it needs to be and just do it a little bit at a time. So I was kind of in my mind thinking I was going to have to glue this all together, let the glue dry and then go back and do it. But after the mistake I made on the front and the glue kind of didn't really do what it needed to, it kept loosening up anyway. So I said, let me just do one hole at a time, make sure it lands where it needs to each time. And at the same time, reinstalling the hardware that I pulled off, the original straps from the original climb bag. And now I'm gonna put the framework on those three rivets and then slowly work my way around to the left and the right side. And here I screw up the rivet, I bent it, so I have to cut it out. It's difficult working with these long ones when you don't need them to be long because they get, they get a bit squirrely because you're using copper and it's very soft. So if you hit it at an incorrect angle, it will cause it to bend. So now you'll notice I'm not cutting them off. I'm just cinching them because I don't want the collars to roll back off. I don't want to hammer and ball every rivet until I'm confident 
that I'm doing the right thing. So you see I just put the collar down and I cinch it with the, with the lineman pliers. There's no way I could accidentally put them in the wrong place once I do this. But as I said, I don't want to... I could still go backwards. I could still make a mistake. I could forget to put a buckle on. And they're difficult to get off when you put them on incorrectly. So now this is the last side. Uh, there's another little trick, just drilling holes through into the styrofoam. That really helps. And you can see that little desk anvil I'm using. Cliff Dufton made that here, one of the blacksmith classes. And I use it from time to time for installing rivets. It's just a little desktop anvil. And I wouldn't do this against wood. It really helps to do it against a piece of steel. And now this is where I was a little nervous trying to pull the leather into this corner because the canvas does it beautifully. It's, it's almost imperceptible, but the leather, you have to turn it and make it fit that turn. But leather is also pretty pliable. So especially this particular piece of leather was really quite soft. And now I was having some more trouble here trying to get the anvil up inside the bag. And now I'm considering, am I marring the outside of the bag hammering on here? Am I scratching the leather on the outside? I had already drilled holes through the face, so I wasn't being super careful anymore. And then to get close to the snippers, I needed end snippers. That's why I have those nail pullers. But this is a circumstance where people always say to me, why do you have so many tools? Why do you need so many tools? For the one time a year, I make a gate mouth bag and I can't clip the rivets down low. That's why I have 30 different pairs of snippers. Because one of them will be the ones that I need to get right inside. And now here I'm having trouble. It's I ended up just getting a drop from the lathe. Now you'll see me pull it out quickly. It's just a two inch chunk of steel wrapped in a towel because it had oil on it. That's it, two inch chunk of steel. It's a two inch solid cylinder, about three inches long. And that becomes my new anvil. Again, making that turn, trying to get that pleat in the right spot. No glue, it's like working without a net, but I tell you, it, it, I say it too many times that I really learned on this first one and I think anytime you do a project, it's really important to keep that in mind. You're learning on the first one or two you do. And I'm very happy with it, it looks great, it came out great. I just drilled three holes in the front by accident. There it is, now I know better how to make a gate mouth bag stealing the hardware from someplace else. And the next one I make will be better. Because when you make something twice, you always improve. So keep that in mind. Thank you, Weaver Leather. Look at that.